All right, so how to calculate Gibbs free energy. And again, Gibbs free energy is going to resemble very much free energy of formation. But Gibbs free energy is simply delta G, whereas standard free energy of formation was delta G not for the standard, F for the formation. So that is one way to simply um, decipher between the two. So this is Gibbs free energy, and this may or may not be under standard conditions. Um, whereas the free energy value used G values for the reactants and products, took the sum of each and then the difference between reactants and products to find delta G F. Here we are using many different variables. We are going to use not only entropy, but temperature and enthalpy to help us calculate Gibbs free energy. So we're going to be using this equation rather than the summation equation for Gibbs free energy. That's another difference. So when you see Gibbs free energy, look to this equation. That means that Gibbs free energy or delta G is, is going to rely on enthalpy, entropy, and temperature. Enthalpy will be in kilojoule units, entropy will be in joule units, and temperature will be in Kelvin units. So that means that enthalpy and entropy must be uh, converted so that they have the same unit. So they should either both be in kilojoules or both in joules. Additionally, your temperature, if given in Celsius, should be converted to Kelvin. All right, so let's take a look at this particular problem that asks us to calculate Gibbs free energy for the reaction of the decomposition of calcium carbonate into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. And let's say that this is happening at 25 degrees Celsius. So. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S is our equation. Now, you may be provided your H, your delta H, your T, and your delta S values in the actual problem itself. So let's say that you were provided those values, where your delta H is 177.8 kilojoules. Your T is 25 degrees Celsius, which we know equals 298 Kelvin, and your change in entropy is 160.5 joules. So note that you have kilojoules and joules, and that is important. So if you're given these values, it's nice and easy where delta G is equal to delta H, which is 177.8 kilojoules, minus 25 plus 273 is how we got the 298 degrees Kelvin conversion. And the delta S that we're given here is 160.5, and that is in joules. Now, what you could do is go ahead and convert this 160.5 to 0 0.1605, or just go ahead and multiply 298 times 160.5, and then move your decimal over. So. In essence, what we're trying to do here is make this point 1605 kilojoules. So again, if you write your units, you can always make sure that they match and that you don't have to worry about making a mathematical mistake. So negative goes there where we're going to subtract the two. So 177.8 kilojoules. And 298 times 0 0.1605 is going to give us a value of 47.8 kilojoules. And we're going to then subtract those two values to find delta G. And delta G, therefore, is going to be 130 kilojoules of value. So again, make sure that if you are going to input 160.5 and multiply it by your temperature, that you later then convert this big, big number, which would have been somewhere on the order of 47,800 into 47.8, or do as I did and just simply when you plug it in, make note of those two different units, go ahead and, and divide by 1,000 to get kilojoules, and then every unit matches up and we end up with a value of 130 kilojoules as our delta G value. Now, what if we uh, were not given this delta H and T and delta S and we were actually asked 
to find each of those values, meaning we had to use this table of values provided rather than um, these nice simple values that are um, already uh, trimmed and calculated and ready to use. Well, if you are given a table such as this that may have G values, H values, or S values, you will of course need the H values and S values, and you will have to use the summation equation to find the sum of your products and the sum of your reactants and take the difference of the two. That is what I have done using this row of H values and this row of S values to find this number and this number. So I'll show you how to do that now. Um, there is a video also on these to be able to show you how to go through your standard free energy calculations and standard entropy uh, of reaction calculations and standard enthalpy would be the same way. So this one equation actually serves all of these different purposes um, and uh, viewing those videos will um, show you how to make, do those calculations and uh, find these values just as I'm, ab uh, I'm about to show you now. If they aren't provided to you uh, in the problem itself, you will have to find them. So let's start with our delta H. Delta H is the sum of all of our products, delta H's, and all of and the difference of the sum of the reactant H values. And this is, of course, taking into consideration per mole. That means the H values that are in this table up here are all per one mole. That means that the total H value for each compound, the calcium carbonate, the calcium oxide, and the carbon dioxide should be representative of the total number of moles, which in this case is simple. There's one mole, one mole, and one mole. So one times each of these numbers is the same. So very simple here. But if you look at the other video, you will find that when you do have coefficients, it's not as simple as just plucking these numbers out of this table, but rather you need to multiply the number of moles by each value to find the total number of moles before plugging into this summation equation. Luckily, this problem has one mole of every reactant and product, so we just uh, pluck the value out and use it as is. So the sum of our, our products uh, minus the sum of our reactant H is here. So taking our H values, that would be the sum of negative 635.6 negative 393.5 that's for calcium oxide and for carbon dioxide and that's the sum of our products minus our reactants there's only one and that is negative 1206.9 negative 1206.9 it's all in kilojoules so it's all good and delta H equals negative 630 5.6 plus negative 393.5 that gives us a total of negative 1029.1 minus of course the 12 the negative 1206.9 that we have minus and minus makes it a plus so delta H is equal to negative 1029.1 plus 1206.9 and the total there would be 177 0.8 kilojoules. And that is how I attained this value up here. You would do the exact same for the delta S values to find the S values. You would take the sum of 39.8 to 13.6 and subtract 92.9 and you would attain the very same value that I got, which is 160.5. So let's try that. So delta S would be sum of products S values minus the sum of the reactant S values. So delta S is equal to the sum of the products, which in this case, if we go back up, you'll see. 39.8 and 213.6. So 39.8 and 213.6. There's just one of each, so it's times one, and they're the same. Minus the sum of the reactants. We only had one lonely reactant, and that was our calcium carbonate, which was 
an S value of 92.9. Double check that up here and there you go. 92.9, so these are the numbers I'm using now. And hopefully when I do finish this problem, I will attain this 160.5 that I had right there. Let's go back and see. All right, so delta S equals 39.8 plus 213.6 gives me a total of 253.4 minus, oops, minus 92.9. Delta S, when you subtract those two out, should give you 160.5, and that will be in joule units. So again, delta H was in kilojoules, S was in joules, and of course that's why I converted that to 0.1605 kilojoules when I plugged it into my Gibbs free energy equation. Right there, right there, and right there. So once you've calculated your delta G, then you are good to go.